Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udzu billahi minasyaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, did anybody check your WhatsApp? Who I think Aiman was updating us, right? Is this is tomorrow the first of Zulhijah? No, no. He, he 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 just said it wasn't announced officially. Is it announced already? Officially, not tomorrow, right? It is tomorrow. Wait, today or tomorrow? Oh, today. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this one is so good. Is there your Eid hashtag? Sure, yeah? Huh? Yeah, that's what the Tomorrow, yeah? So, Alhamdulillah. Uh, tomorrow it is the first of the Hijjah. That means go back quickly tonight before Maghrib. If you need to cut, you need to cut your nails and all this. Yeah? You need to cut by today. This is especially those of you who are doing the Qurban. Yeah? Um, it is highly, highly, highly recommended for you not to, to cut your hair, not cut, cut your nails all the way until your animal is slaughtered. Yeah? If you are doing overseas, always be careful for the animals Yeah, because the animals must be slaughtered after you celebrate the Eid today, that means for Indonesians, it's always about what, seven, seven hours later, right? So they cannot be slaughtered earlier than your Eid. If not, your, and you, your korban is not accepted as a korban, it's just a sadaqah, right? So you need to coordinate your um, sacrifice with, with the other countries. Yeah, Egypt is very expensive, you know, the, um, the meat. Always Egypt, Algeria is very expensive. They always said they, they, I think at least 200 pounds, right? Why so expensive? Sorry, Morgan. Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah, I know all this kind is very expensive. Okay, so quickly within five, 10 minutes, let, let us remind ourselves what, what is, what should we do in this standards of Zulhijjah? First of all, what is, what is the hadith, uh, Adam? First standards of Zulhijjah. Standards of Zulhijjah. Come on, this is not this is not the first lesson we did before. Adam, what's the hadith? You should know it's because you know. Do you know? What is this? I don't know who's behind me. <laughs> I, I felt some some presence behind me. It's not your first lesson. Yes, alhamdulillah. It takes a revert to to know, alhamdulillah, <laughs> that any deed that is that that are done in this stand, first standard of religion is more beloved to Allah than even jihad, unless the person died uh, in jihad or lost a lot of money, then the person is much more worth than the person who does this this standard of religion. So very important, brothers. When Allah gave us this ability to well redeem ourselves in His eyes. Take advantage of it don't ignore it right so that means technically we should do many many good deeds right the, the most important deed that we should do in this standards of religion will be hatch hatch make dua for our brother reno right he's facing some difficulties there i won't mention what but please make dua that he's able to to complete his uh, hatch inshallah right no, no. No, no. Yes, yes, yes. The one that went with us to the uh, retreat. The, the yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, that's the best thing. Those of us who have been to Umrah, alhamdulillah, but <coughs> Hajj is a very different story. Right? It's a lot of things involved, a lot of sacrifice, and therefore the reward is much, much more. Yeah. As you know, the reward of Hajj is. What is the reward, Allah? Forgiveness of sins, as if you're, you're like a baby. Right, and and this is absolutely important. But not every person who go to Hajj will have this kind of reward. Why? Why? Yes, you will see. Even in Umrah, you will see. Right, all the innovations that happen in the Umrah, you will see. Right, and and Hajj is even worse. A lot of innovations. Um. So, for example, right, everybody now with the, with, the, with the modern technology, they have. The, the places that you're going to go, for example, on the 8th of Zulhijjah, it's got Mina. A lot of tents are there. 
and after they go to Arafah and all this, and then on the 10th of Zulhijjah, they will go to back to Mina to throw stones and all this. Yeah. Before, many years ago, there wasn't any hotels around the area. Right. So now they, they make that many groups would say, we'd rather go to the hotels and sleep and come back to the tent the next day, which is completely not accepted. Even when, I, when, even when I went to my first Hajj, it was 2003, right? Some of you were not even born, right? When, you, when is your date? Okay. Even then, I had to abandon my group because they decided to, exempt thing, this Malaysian group decided to go and sleep in the hotels. And I had to say no, because at the end of the day, the, 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 the haq is the haq. You need to follow the truth, not follow whatever other things that is, in, is convenient for you. Why, for example, the Hajj, right? People have to stay in tents. Why must they stay in the tents, not back to the hotels? Why is so? <coughs> yes. Why? Yeah, but, but why? What was the reason? Yeah. Why not in the hotels? Because when you go to the hotels, there's so many distractions, right? Shopping, too much comfort and all this. The tent is a tent. Fitna, right? For some people, right? Hello? <laughs> and and this is this is important. Why there are reasons why we are there because we the the people who went to Hajj, the pilgrims have to stay there for after on the eleventh and twelfth. They have to stay in in the in, in Mina in the tents, not in the comfort of the hotels. <coughs> so there's always a reason that all of us must realize about uh, this monastic Hajj, Hajj procedures, you, you must follow, inshallah. Okay. <coughs> Sorry? Well, at the end of this, all about money, eh? You can ask me the same question, why are they having this um, Nicki Minaj concert in uh, Jeddah and all this? Exactly the same thing. Culture? <laughs> okay, I'm not supposed to judge, okay. Um, yeah, well, same thing as well. You have the boxing and all these kind of things. You just cannot answer these, these questions. Um, why, when the Saudi took over the, the, the Hajj for the last two years, why the price was so expensive? Now it's coming down again. So, just couldn't ex ex explain. Yeah. So, but it is important that we, inshallah, try to um, make do with the best that we can. Yeah. Don't say on the day of judgment, yeah, Allah have no money to go to Hajj. Remember the story I told you about these Algerians and with the big houses and I asked them why you never go to Hajj because they got, got no money and yet all the money was spent on building building the palace in this world. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, at the end of the day, risk from Allah, right? And I have to say something, right? Hold on, I have to say something, right? You only go to Hajj upon Allah's invitation, upon Allah's invitation. So that it doesn't matter whether you have money or not. I have people whom I know has no money, but both husband and wife were invited to go to Hajj. Right? So it doesn't matter what it is, but but at the end of the day, risk come Allah. Right? So what do you mean that you, that you have? Yes. Yeah, then you have to ask Allah to, to, to help because this, but this is Hajj is the fifth Pillar of Islam. Pillar is very important. Yeah. And I can guarantee you, have anybody been to Hajj? Yeah. So you don't have the experience, right? So in the sense that once you go to Hajj, it's a completely yes. This year is about seven thousand. Huh? Yes, seven thousand. So don't don't buy all these uh, branded things for your school. <laughs> so, um, but I can guarantee you, Subhanallah. Once you go to Hajj, life will be very different. You think the Umrah is amazing? Hajj is even much, much more amazing because it's, it's, it, it's a huge thing standing in front of Allah in Arafah. That you, in Arafah is a place in which everybody must stand there. Hajj is Arafah in the Hadith. That means if you don't stand in Arafah, your Hajj is not accepted. And that is al -Hijjah. Allah will gather all these angels that He created and He will told, tell the angels, look at these people. Before I created them, you say that they are not, they're not going to obey me. Because of me, they are dirty, they are dusty, and therefore I'm going to forgive all their sins. And that moment, brothers, in front 
uh, or next side by side with about 2.5 million people, you feel as if you're just alone with Allah. You don't feel the presence of anybody, right? So again, it's a huge thing. Even when I'm talking like this, my head is standing, standing on ends because the, the effect of Hajj is huge for those whom Allah wills. Because a lot of people too, in Arafah, which is so important, Arafah means in the day is it, is it, is it, is the period, especially from Zohar to Maghrib. You have six hours. You think six hours is a long, too long time? How can what do I can I make in six hours? But as you know, when you're en enjoying yourself, time passes so fast. But you will see many people. I'm not talking about one or two. Many people are sleeping. Many people are talking, eating for a long time. <laughs> Because the, the day before that is called the day of Tarwiyah, eighth of Zulhijjah. It is a day in which you are supposed to quench the test. You go to Mina first to rest. But a lot of people you see they are not resting, they're talking, they're shopping, and they go to places, and they're not they're not resting. So ninth of Zulhijjah, when it comes, people are very tired. You're supposed to be so fresh that you will always want to make dua in the in the five, six hours. Time also is would be so precious. And you will see. Right, especially you will see the sun going down. As the sun goes down, the crying gets louder and louder because you know that is the end of Arafah. It's a huge thing, right? We only we know what it means. Yeah, so it's, it is important that we make the effort from now on. <laughs> Doesn't matter whether you are seventeen, you are eighteen, or you are thirty, or you are forty. Right? You need to make dua to Allah to invite you to go to Hajj. Right? Don't say that, oh, I got no money. Uh, that's what a lot of people, why do a lot of people are afraid to go to Hajj? Hey? No, that's not the reason. Yeah, but that's not the main reason. The main, no, the main reason is people are scared to change. That's the main reason. How do you mean? That means they know once they come back. They have to change their, their ways that perhaps Allah may not be pleased with them. Oh, the yes. That's the that's 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 main reason why some people are afraid to go to the mosque. Is it true? Yes. After this, yes. I won't be able to do anything. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't know that you're going to make it to this. Precisely. Station, right? You know, yeah, the I, I was so glad when I went to Hajj, I was so fit. We're going to run anywhere and without no problems. If you want us to go to Hajj now, or, you know. That pain of you know going here and there is it's quite difficult when you're old, when you're older, right? So it is important to go when you are you're fit and you, when you are still young and able to change. Because brothers, the longer you are you you when you change, the longer that you you live in this life, the more you're more prepared to face Allah. Agree? Because people think, as you said, right? Because in Afghanistan, I'm not just in Turkey, even right? You can see. It. I'm not making fun of people. You can see the Turkish people in general when they go to Hajj, they're the same posture. They're, they're, they're a bit hunched back, the same age, exactly the same, because they wait until they're about 55, 60, and then, then they, they want to go. It's completely, it's good, alhamdulillah, but you would lose a lot of, you get tired when you do extra work. You need to rest for a few hours, then you go for next extra worship. Right? So, this is important that. At this moment, when we are still young and alive, you not we. When you are still young and alive, you do need to make the effort to ask Allah to invite you to go to Hajj, right? Save money, make the effort, inshallah. But be be rest assured, right? Never, never be scared of having no money because at the end of the day, it's not you who give the money. It's Allah who give the risk. He's our razak. He's is our rob. He's the one who provides, right? Um, Indonesia is a bit different. Because many of them would sell their lands. They sell their lands in order to go to 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 Hajj. Um, alhamdulillah. Of course, some of them uh, cheated a little bit. They went in Ramadan and stayed all over, all, all the way until Hajj. In the meantime, they would sell some cakes, some, they, and they know spend some money. I've seen some of them. Yeah. So, the most important thing that we must do in the standards of Zulhijjah will be Hajj. So make the effort to go to Hajj is not a way that you will change your name to Haji Adam. And that is what not my culture, your culture, I'm sure the same, right? They change the name, right? To Haji Adam in your passport. They change everything because they want to show it's about status, right? Especially in the early days. At my generation in those days, every Hajj, 
about three to five hundred people died every Hajj because it was stampede and all this. There was even more serious Hajj because when 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 I went for my first Hajj, I did not know whether I'm going to be alive after the Hajj. And this this is interesting because and for me is that's how it's supposed to be. That when you go to a long journey, you must assume that you you're not coming back. So you prepare everything, your wheels, you prepare many things for your family. Yes. Sorry? Yes, there were fires and many things. But more important, more more usual is the stampede because the place is so small. And I've seen it even at a long distance. I and when I look people throwing stones, as a lot of people died, you will wonder, oh, would I be still alive after throwing the stones? Right? Because the frequency of death was so many, and right? people died because of the stampede. So, so coming back to Hajj, do make the effort. This is the most important date. Always remember, you will be exempted if you have no money. But looking at the people in front of me, inshallah, I don't think so. We may be exempted, agreed? In general. You won't be exempted unless you're so poor in, in countries like um, Palestine, in Yemen, or whatever, even though so near, it's very difficult for them to have some money to go to India, right? Uh, but all of us in front of me, I don't think we fall into the category of exemptions. Agreed? So it is important you have to ask Allah to invite. If Allah do not invite, you will not go. Right? Now, so, sorry? Second important deed that we need to do is, brothers, uh, no, specifically, qurban, right? That means in this, an act of sacrifice of an animal, right? Some madhab like the, you guys, right? The Hanafi in general, they make qurbani as obligatory, right? In your, in your madhab, right, in general, right? Right? Sorry? <laughs> hey, but you know it's, it's culture right whatever we call it um but the rest of us the majority would make it sunnah muakadas it's a stress sunnah right so it is important what is the reward of qurban yes yeah, so all the all the animal the, the whole weight of the animal with the horns and the hooves will be weighed on the day of judgment as your your deed as a reward not only that, even before the blood reaches the ground, you get the reward. Normally, you get the reward only after you done your deeds. And then also Allah may assess whether you accept it or not. This automatically you get the reward, inshallah. Yeah. Um at the above is Udiya. 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 Right. Qurban. It is, it is, it is part, part of sacrifice, yes. Yeah, that people use. Um so do make the so very important if you are deciding to sacrifice the sheep, right? You cannot share two or three people. The sheep must be for one to get the full reward. If you just sacrifice, uh, share a sheep for about two, three people, you get only the reward of sadaqah, not the full um, qurban. Okay? The qurban can be done when? Or must be done when? After eat until? No, but until, until which date? Well, which date is specifically? 13th of the Hijjah, remember? Is this Eid or the other Eid in Ramadan is a bigger Eid? This coming Eid is bigger. Why? Why is it bigger Eid? And not only that, because that Eid after Ramadan is your own personal achievement. This is the Ummah. Unity of the Ummah. Right, and that is why, and also the din was completed on the, on the, in the in the day of Arafah. So it's a he began eat. That's why, in the eat after Ramadan, you cannot fast only for one day. The celebration is only for one day. But my culture is one month. Alhamdulillah. Right, but in this eat, and somehow that is some, I don't understand my culture. Right, this, this is a very small, very small celebration in my side of the world. But it's actually a bigger eat. You cannot fast for four days. Right, 10, 11, 12, 13. You are not allowed to fast. Or say it's four days of celebration. What is need? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, if you have not made the order, some countries are very cheap. Don't ask me why. As, as, as I said, right? In your country, be three, four hundred pounds. Indonesia is about one hundred seventy pounds. Some countries about hundred pounds or um, eighty pounds. Don't know why, right? But whatever it is, if you can't afford it, get a country that's cheap. I think so much. I think Bangladesh quite cheap. Shell cow. 
Yeah, share of cow. Yeah, share of cow. You can share some, but cow is quite, quite expensive. Right? Um, so do make the effort to the Purban, inshallah. Okay? Questions? Now, another, yes. 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 So that's why for me, I, 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 co I coordinate it such that they will do one day later. Yes, in Indonesia, our 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 Qurban steps, Allah, we do it one day later. The Qurban, so that we, it doesn't coincide with our Eid. The Eid come first, then the Qurban tomorrow. Okay. Now fasting, right? Is it easy to fast now? Yeah, but it's harder. It's harder, but I always think about those Palestinians who has no water, those African countries who has to walk for miles only to get the water from the animal. The animal they share the water with the animals. Then I would think that well, it's not so bad that we did even eighteen hours, right? So it's not difficult, inshallah. Yeah, but you do need to make more effort to fast. <coughs> We know a lot of scholars recommend fasting for all the nine days. That means from the first to the ninth. But if you can't, especially in this country, fast on the Mondays and Thursdays, and especially on the ninth, yes. If you're traveling, it's the fast option. No, if you're traveling, you're accepted. You're purposely travel, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard, yes. Yes, but, but there, there, there is a hadith, yeah, but from Muhammad Sassam said that. It is not a sign of piety that you fast while you're traveling. That means there's so that means that if a person refuses to travel, it refuses to fast while traveling, that, that doesn't make him less pious than a person who is fasting. You get the reward, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. But that is especially for Ramadan, right? Because it's difficult to fast outside Ramadan. So when I go to Umrah, for example, in Ramadan, right? I will still fast in the plane. Because you don't know, to, I don't want to make up of the Ramadan. Yeah. Okay. Um, but most important fasting is the ninth of Zulhijjah. What is the reward? Two years of sins forgiven, minor sins, right? The year before and the following year are forgiven. So do make the effort. So today, so tomorrow is the first, right? So next week, Saturday is the ninth. Am I correct? No, no, ninth of Zulhijjah I'm talking about. Sorry? Huh? Yeah, you're talking about, I'm talking about the our time, the Gregorian time, right? So if tomorrow is the first, so tomorrow is Friday, right? So the Saturday next week is the ninth. So it's always just to remind you, don't forget the important day of Arafah. Yeah? Arafah, many things happened, we discussed many times, yeah, about the deen was completed in Arafah, right? Even the story of Surah number 7, verse number 172, that Adam, Allah, wiped, wiped his back happened on it, on an Arafah day, yeah? Um, what is the dua of Arafah? Both for the people, the pilgrims and us. Adam? See, I will say Adam, all the tree would, would, would lift up the head. All the three Adams. What's the dua of Arafah? You're traveling, right? Don't forget, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? Oh, is it not long? Okay. We discussed before. If I start something, you would know 100%. Sorry? Sorry? Allah Akbar. No, this is another thing that we need to do. What is it? Omar? What is the dua of Arafah? Now, according to many scholars, you know, in the day of Arafah, Allah will save them, those whom He wills from hellfire. According to many scholars, it's not just for people in Arafah. It happens to, may happen to some of us also, not in Arafah. Right? So there's a dua that we need to say. Not a dua, it's adkar. What is it? Now, on the day of Arafah, Allah will save those whom He wills from hellfire. 
So a lot of people think there's only people in Arafat, but scholars said not necessary. It happened to, can happen to some of us also, right? So what is the dua? La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la I know. Wahdahu la sharika la. Lahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Very easy. Right? Sorry? I'm sure. I'm very sure you know it. Right? We did we many times before, right? So don't forget, next Saturday, as many days, as, as many times as possible, say this. La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika la. Lahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. None is right to worship but, but you. Allah, yeah. He has no partners. He is the dominion. He is the the praise. And what does it mean? Is have, have the power over everything. And this is quite important because some of us are many. For example, I'm not saying you, right? You may have the thought that, oh, how can I get more money? Again, it's not you. When 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 we say this, we are reminding ourselves, Allah has the power to do everything, right? So don't worry about, about money because your job is just to worship Allah and with His will, of course, make the effort, inshallah, you get whatever things you want. Okay? Um, so don't forget this day of Arafah, fast, and make this uh, adhkar as many times as possible, inshallah. Now, the takbir. That there are two kinds of takbir. One is a takbir called a takbir, um, let me see, takbir al-mutlaq. And takbir al muqayyad Yeah. What is takbir al, al mutlaq As you can see at any time. What must we say starting from tomorrow? No, we are, we are not in uh, Umrah and Hajj. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Walillahi alham. Right. You you should say it all the time. And this is called this is called takbir al mutlaq. That means there's that no specific times. Yes, so in Arafah day, then you change the takbir takbir al muqayyad. That means you come across all the mosques that you say. People say after obligatory prayers, right? They say Allah akbar, Allah akbar. Something la ilaha illallah, Allah akbar, Allah akbar, walillahi alham. Yes. So and it is important if you look. A lot of people are doing it together. You don't need together. You do it individually. So don't do it in a unison. Okay. Questions? So this had to be done starting from tomorrow. The takbir um, al-mutlaq. Maqayyad is specific after the obligatory press. Questions? All the time. As best as, as much as you want. Yes. It's a lot of reward. 13, 13 it ends in asar. Yes, on the Asar time. Yeah? Sim, sim, sim. Sorry? Yeah. Are you, where are you from? Marco, okay. Maybe you guys are special. I've been there for, I know. All right? Morocco is special, right? Just been to Morocco, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, as you know, the important part of Arafah is Islam was complete. It's not up to you and me to do things differently. It's quite important, right? And don't follow the majority. Which which surah the Quran Allah do not follow the majority? Brothers, do not follow the majority. Surah number six, verse number one one six. Right? If you look what six one one six, correct uh, correct me. Wa in aktara man fil ardi. Yes, wa in to the akthara man fil ardi yadulluhu yadullu an sabilillah. Yeah, for Allah, right? In yatabiyuna illa donna wa in in yatabiyuna illa donna wa inhum illa yakhrusun. Yeah, so uh, Allah said very clearly, right? If if you obey most of those on the earth, they will only mislead you far away from Allah's path. They do nothing, they follow nothing but guessing. They do nothing but lie. Even for me in my own culture, right? We tend to follow people 
then when you look at your hadith, there's no hadith, there's no dalil. Right? The Prophet's birthdays, Yasin on Thursday nights, right? Um, Yasin on the deceased, right? People people are doing this after four, seven days, 40 days, right? Everybody's doing it. So all this, if you look at the hadith, there's no concrete evidence about all this, right? Syrians also, of course, right? The, you guys are the um, shrines, right? Big time, right? Um, no, 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 my side. Yeah, Moroccans, yes. Moroccans, Egyptians. <laughs> Too many Hollywood die, right? Everybody need to, to build a shrine, right? So, so this this is very important. So, if you see a lot of people are going there to do your worship, worshiping, you think it's the right thing, right? Yeah, of course. Am I at? Imam Hussein. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So always be careful. Again, this is a topic for today. After this, we're going to mention that this about Allah's rights. That we must know Allah's rights. Yeah. Okay. Salam alaikum. So, brothers, so it is important, right, that we look at ourselves, do not follow the majority, follow the one that has dalil, has evidence in the term, in every act of worship. What is the consequence that if we don't follow the Quran and Sunnah? Yes. No. Yes, let's make a kafir. It just means that you're committing acts of innovation and coffee are very different. Very different. So be careful. Sorry? It is, but doesn't mean that doesn't mean that Muslims cannot go hellfire, right? Everybody has all their own merits. So what's the consequence of not uh, following Quran and Sunnah? First of all, your deeds are not accepted. Secondly, before going to uh, hellfire, you cannot drink from the point of Al-Kawtha. Right? Why must we drink from the point of Gawthar? Sorry, what's your name? Abdurrahman. Subhanallah. What, what, why, what is the concept? Why must we drink from the point of Gawthar? Why must we all drink, inshallah? Even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will pass the cup individually to us to drink. Yeah, especially that you won't feel thirsty at all. It's the only way not to feel thirsty ever, right? So a person who again is authentic hadith, how people are driven away, and Prophet Muhammad was was also confused. Why? But these are my ummah. Why do you drive them away? It was because the angels answered that they they invented things after you pass away. There is such a thing. There's a lot of people following following the rest, following the culture, right? But you have to remember, right? Islam is not culture. Prophet Muhammad also has been sent specifically to show us what to do. A lot of people are just very, very stubborn. They do not want to change. Not because of anything, but arrogance. Do you agree? Because arrogant that, oh, um, we are always doing this. I, I mean, as I said, I myself change a lot. Because once you know it's not correct, you just have to leave it and move on to the, follow the Quran and Sunnah. You cannot be arrogant to think you, only your way is the best. Yeah, then then we need to understand what is Furqan. What is Furqan? A criterion to know what is right, what is wrong. Why are people, for example, in your side of the world, right, are singing and running in a circle and all this, right? Whereas people like us, alhamdulillah, we say no. This innovation, correct? Is this thing of Furqan? Allah put on those people whom He wills the ability to know what is right, what is wrong. And we must know how to get this Furqan. How to get this Furqan? Yeah, Quran is called Al Furqan. The problem with many of us, as you know, we read the Quran, but we don't understand. We just finish the Quran, oh, Alhamdulillah, finish within one month, one, one whole thing. Then you don't find any change in yourself. It's just a ritual. Many people are like that. Because when, okay, two things. 
to justify what you yeah understand to you yeah 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 two but but two verses in the quran i always use about al yama al al yama akmaltu lakum dinakum then then we should now stop it five Verse number three, Al Yamu Akum what what at Mam Tu Alakum Nyamati or Rodi Black Mislamidina. Right? This this day I have perfected religion for you. I have completed my favorite upon you. I have chosen Islam as your way we of that means Islam was completed. Right? Allah chose Islam, not we. So Allah has chosen us this, this 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 is the way. Not this way, but this way. But we always choose this way in order to practice Islam. And it's completely wrong. So Allah has chosen Islam for us. Secondly, which which other verse I always 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 say. Surah number two was number thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Qul imma yatiyannakum minni hudan fa man tabi'a hudaya fala khawfun alayhim wallahu yahzanu. Allah said when he, he drove Adam out of paradise, get out all of you from this place, but there will come to you guidance from me. Not from your parents, not from my parents, not from my great 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 mother, great grandmother, mercy from Allah. And whoever follows my guidance upon them shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. If you look at all these assessments before, Quran is a treasure. If you know this treasure, you know that you wouldn't want to take sources from anybody else except Allah. That's how Allah sent Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to show us exactly how to do it. When, when people say, Sami Allah, Liman Hamidah, some people do this, right? Sami Allah, Liman Hamidah. That's not correct. Your culture, right? You 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 do do this, right? Some Allah, this must touch the ear. It's not like this. How is this, right? And it's not even according to madhab. Is you just inventing new things, right? And this is very important that we we look at the prayers of Prophet Muhammad. Even he, what did he say about salah? Salu kama raaitumuni usali. Pray as if you see me pray. Yes. Yeah, so this right, this way the palm face facing the uh, qibla, either shoulder level or the ear level, not this. Of course, this is, um, but this is, this is not, this is the sunnah. That means if we do other ways, it's okay. But again, what? Yeah. Well, you, you have to follow the Prophet Muhammad as best as you can, right? That's why all he said, pray as if you see me pray. Not pray as if you see your father pray, your grandmother pray. And very important too. Yeah, but we it, but it's described very clearly. Have you have you seen which book is is a book by Sheikh Albani, right? I think pray have you seen the book uh, Adam? Yeah, this prayer of the Prophet Muhammad something like that. Sorry? Yeah, 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 it's very clear about how we do it. Ah, that's different. That's, that's, that's another, another, another thing, right? Yes. No, I mean, at the end of the day, um, that, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, brothers, this is Sunnah. So we need to argue about Sunnah. No, this is Imam Malik that he, he does this. Yes, yes, yes. But anyway, there's another story. It's, it's a huge debate that we can go through, an unending debate. If, if you, if I, I would always follow the one which is more accurate, more authentic than hadith, which is here, in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what other things that we can do in the tenders of the Juzul Hijjah? We talk about fasting, anything, right? Quranic recitations, uh, do do your do your zakat or do you do your sadaqa, right? Whatever things that you want, right? So so this is important. On the so do many things as best as you can, brothers. In the day, what time you finish your work usually? Five, six o'clock. Still daylight, right? Right. So you can go to the malls, do more adhikar, do more Quranic recitations. So in this time, it's very precious. Don't go back and sleep and all this. I know it's tempting to sleep because you now it's difficult to wake up for fajr and all this, right? 
but do use so always remember use the daytime the daylight we are long daylights now right in order to worship allah inshallah yeah the last one of course is the eid right the eid as you know is falls within one of the the, the last of the 10 days of Zulhijjah, right what is so now of this eid before you go to the eid prayer no the no, this is the, uh, the other eat always remember when you're fasting you're hungry so eat now you're not fasting in the sense you don't it's a sunnah not to eat before the other yes we should not not to eat before the eat bread so yes if you can walk to and if you can pray in an open field yes yeah go to one direction go to one way come back another way it's not just but it is sunnah secondly perhaps you know when the grounds that you walk they will witness you on the day of judgment perhaps yeah but i think as soon as sunnah we just follow right um what other things that you do uh, where something clean what do the whole soul of course yeah alhamdulillah yeah of course we have perfume yeah now the yeah Yes, it's similar to the other eat, of course. It's just that the difference is the uh, what do you call it, the eating before the eat prayer. Yep. Questions? Before we move on to the to topic for today, it's just to revise, make revisions. Yeah. The, the fasting before is it just the Saturday? Sorry? Did we just fast on the Saturday? On the Friday as well? Now, according to most scholars, if it falls on these days and is Allah for the you can fast only on that day. So, for example, if I'm fasting a prophet, prophet doubt fasting right surely because it's, it's, it's alternate days fasting one day i only get the one of the days is surely on a friday only so in that is an exception that you can only fast on a friday same same thing as arafah okay yes so that means one day you you, you know we're not supposed to fast only on friday but that will fall on a friday only so there's an exception that because you are you are doing a habit, a habitual fasting that you can do only on a Friday. Yep. Questions? So are we ready, inshallah? Sure, yeah, tomorrow is <laughs> first of all, I, I haven't looked at it, so I I do not know. So if you say so, if anything wrong, I will blame you, Adam. Adam, Egyptian. No, there's a, one of the... Uh, actually, there's the best fasting according to Prophet fasting of Prophet uh, Dawood alayhi salam. One day on, one day fast, one day don't fast. No, that's only for other other days. If you want to do it, if not, fast Mondays and Thursdays. That's easiest, inshallah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that means, but my intention would be fasting the days that you missed. They still get the reward anyway. They still get the reward because what's the reason of fasting on Mondays and Thursdays, Akram? Yes, but yeah, our deeds are presented to Allah. So it doesn't matter whether you fast on that you miss, but you're still fasting, right? When your your deeds are presented, also you still get the reward anyway, inshallah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now. The rights of Allah is so important because a lot of us think that we are in this world just for fun. We have no responsibilities. We just go to Soho at night, right? We can pump up our weekdays, pump up our our in the gym, right? Just to show off, and that's about it. And then go to holidays in Italy, in Morocco, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and this is this is alhamdulillah. Allah give you the risk, but that what is the rise of Allah? In in hadith. Uh, you're, you're correct, right? Um, you're, I didn't say you're wrong. Okay, let, let me tell you about the full hadith. This is from as usual. Uh Mu'ad bin, bin Jabal reported that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Messenger, oh, oh Mu'ad, this is a Prophet said, right? Oh Mu'ad, do you know what is the right of Allah upon his servants? What would the what would the Sahaba always answer? 
correct he always has it but if, if, if you if you ask the people today right for any questions they always say have an answer in which they, they're just guess guessing the answer right <laughs> but I'm, I'm talking about the, the sahaba themselves they always say right allah and his messenger knows best right the prophet sallallahu said to worship him alone and to associate none in worship with him and he asked the next question and do you know what is the right of that their right upon him what is our right upon allah and then what did Mu'an say? <coughs> no, he didn't say that. Only you will say that. <laughs> Allah and his messenger knows best. The Prophet ﷺ said not to punish them if they were to do so. Very straightforward. Right? Now, the interesting part is that it sounds very simple. Right? The rights of Allah. That means we worship. We do not associate anyone with Allah. Right? And does it sound simple? simple but the reality is very different in today's world. morocco you know right about the amount of shirk that some people do in your country right no 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 I'm talking about, about people even in my culture also right remember so did you guys actually see the videos which i sent to you about in the indonesians about this monk this monk this 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 buddhist monk right was using these cups and the holy water and then to just do the blessings and people muslims when sisters wearing hijab would just do this this no 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 people just walking around with this you know, like, like the popes and all these bishops right with the, the holy water just and then you know that this is the thing is a blessing praying all this <laughs> oh the rain area yeah 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 my, my video right the one that the third is the Asians, right? <laughs> Are doing this with the rainwater and you know to drink the rainwater in Kaaba. Yeah, yeah, from the floor, yes. Right. So so it is it is important that we understand this hadith, right? As simple as it is, why are people not understanding this? I'm done. I'm done, right? Why? Why are people? I'm not talking about hundreds of people, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of people are, are not understanding this and the company shirk. Yeah. So first of all, Allah guides whomever He wills, and there's there's a basic principle. You can talk all you want, yeah, but if Allah does not guide us, that means we won't be guided. As simple as that. Guidance is everything. Right, even some people, as you know, are committing all these innovations, as you said. Right? It's all upon Allah's guidance. Right? And I'm sure some of your even family members, you try to do ta'wah, you fail. Because somehow Allah just do not guide them. This is the first principle, it's always Allah's guidance. Right? And that is why Allah informed us, as I said in Surah number 2, verse 30, Allah will, will grant us guidance. Allah will not break His promise. Has Allah granted all of us guidance, you and me? example the quran itself again many of us failed miserably because we just think this quran is just a book to read and not to understand so you read and read and read and yet you are still the same person as you were before five years ago and this cannot be this cannot happen to us because the quran 100 percent allah promises us as a guidance if we are not changing something must be wrong with our recitation right the thing as we do our salah what is the main ingredients of salah? What do we ask Allah for? Guidance. guidance. So if you, you claim that you are um, praying five times a day and you are still hanging hanging out in Soho almost every day, right? You are still drinking, you are still gambling. Something must be wrong with our salah because all, what did Allah promise us in salah? In our salah that? Tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Surah number. 29 was number 45. Whether the salah would prevent immorality and disobedience to Allah. Because in the essence of salah is guidance. Surely many of us, maybe Indonesians, Afghans, Moroccans, Algerians, Syrians, right? Kurds, right? Indians, others, right? <laughs> Surely many people, they don't understand what it means, correct? Agree? 
They don't understand what is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. If you understand what is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin, you won't find any Turkish restaurant selling alcohol. Because Rizq, Allah, is not from your alcohol. And you say Rabbil Alamin, brothers, when you say Rabbil Alamin, it's a huge thing, you know. Means Allah is the one who creates, maintains, sustains, protects, guides. Allah does everything for us. And we claim that every time, <coughs> Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. And yet, you uh, a lot of people are doing things that are completely opposite. We don't trust that Allah protects, and yet, um, your side, right? Where all these, uh, what do you call it? Um, no, no, sorry, your side, where the Tawiz, right? Right? Tawiz, um, your side is uh, what? Hands of Fatima, right? Hands of Fatima, right? I know it, right? Because for protection, yet, it's not. It's not a few, it's a lot. You, you just told me the story, right? When you went to Morocco, the hands of Fatima is everywhere. Agree? It becomes a fashion. And becomes a fashion, right? And so much so that people use that to, to protect themselves. Again, you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You, but your action is completely different. And this must never be done. Must never, you must never do things that contradicts what you say. So that's why my conclusion is the prayer, many people don't understand what it means at all. You say, Iya cannot do what Iya cannot stand only to you, you worship only to you, we seek help. And yet, many people in your side of the world go to the grave. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, ours is not, not that innovation, they're not innovations, right? Um, and everybody goes to the shrines and all that. And yet, you say, Iya cannot do what Iya cannot. It, it contradicts everything that you say. They have their truth from it. They try to say. Okay. okay, but anyway, anyway, but actually, the things that's what the things about Tawheed is it? Is it straightforward? Tawheed? Oh, no, Akram, is it straightforward? Tawheed? It's very straightforward, right? Even the scholars, not the hadith, right? Not the Prophet, وسلم, not even the Sahaba, the scholars have have has even make it easy for us to divide Tawheed, right? Into Rabubiya, Asma wa Sifat, and Aluhiya. Yeah, these things, the first thing that when you became a Muslim or came to us, the first thing I say is about Tawheed. The first thing, right? And I think most of you who came to our classes, the first thing we emphasize is all about Tawheed because Tawheed, if you got it wrong, you got it wrong. Yes. Zaid? <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Who uh, passed away? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But that was exactly what what the Quraysh did. Who was the who who was the who are the idols? Lad Uzza. Who are these people? The righteous people. This was what Nuh salam was sent to these people, right? Because these people in them Nuh salam, they were shaitan tricked them so many times until in the end they started to worship these righteous people. Exactly the same. So, in a sense, we discussed before that the, the Quraysh, they know exactly what is Tawhid ar They know that only Allah protects, controls. Right? But they think that Allah is so, so far high up, they need some intercessor to reach up to Allah. Right? And this is, is itself is a major shirk. Yes. Yes. And then we just like still stick with idols. Isn't it a lot simpler? Why do you have this problem? It's so They have this concept from their forefathers. This is what the forefathers are doing, right? That they have to go through these idols. And we discussed before. Which surah did we discuss? Before following the forefathers? Adam, stop it. Actually, it's two, actually, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm referring to another surah. 
no, that 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 they are following only what the forefathers are doing, and they refuse to change. Okay, let's turn to Surah number five, verse number one zero four and one zero five, right? Five. One zero four. Wa ida qila lahum ila ma anzal Allahu wa ila Rasul. Allu hasbuna ma wajadna alaihi aba ana awalau akana aba uhum la yalamuna shay awala yahtadun. And when it is said to them, come, come to what Allah has revealed, and unto the messengers of Allah Sallam. They say, enough for us is that which we found our fathers following. And Allah reminded them, even though the fathers had no knowledge whatsoever and no guidance. Yes, yeah, this is exactly what all we are suffering according to some our cultures are doing because everybody is doing it. So we are just only forefathers. The next verse, Allah remind, uh, warned all of us. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha tadaytum ila Allahi marji'ukum jami'an fa yunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'malun. Or you believe, take care of your own selves. If you follow the right guidance, no hurt can come to you from those who are in error. The return of you all is to Allah and then He will inform you about all that which you used to do. And this is the common practice of many cultures that they refuse to change. Even my own side, Yasin is Yasin, right? Everybody's doing it. Everybody on Thursday night, everybody not reciting al kaf Yasin in the mosque, right? And this is quite annoying for people who uh, understand the truth because they're completely following what everybody's doing. Yeah. So it is important that we understand Tawhid very well, all of us. So the the, the 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 other reasons why how to, so we discuss about the uh, furqan right how do you get furqan besides Allah's guidance how do you get furqan right what did what Allah say in the Quran Akram how did we, how can we get furqan no this taqwa Turn to Surah number 8, verse number 29. What did Allah say? Yes. Right? 8, verse number 29. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in tattaqullah yaj'al lakum furqana. Do you truly believe if you have taqwa to Allah, He will grant it furqan. Now, taqwa is as the word is, right? Very God-fearing, that you're conscious, you're very... In everything that we do in life, there might be a situation that you might be swayed from following your own desire than following Allah. But a person with taqwa would always prioritize Allah first. Is Will Allah be pleased with me or not? Right? right. Working in Tesco, in the teal, for example. Right? Yes, money is there. But would Allah be pleased with me or not? Yeah? Because you are handling things that are haram. Like non-halal chickens, pork, and all this at the tail, right? Worst thing is alcohol, right? So all these are the things, again, you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, but your actions are completely different because you are afraid that if you don't go or work in this Tesco, you would not be able to get or uh, pay for your bills. Yeah? Um, so these all, uh, as I said, perhaps your progress are not correct. That's why you, you do not know because, as I said, it's impossible that we are committing shirk when our prayer is accepted by Allah. If Allah accepts our prayers, nothing wrong can happen. Agreed? We will not be committing shirk. Yeah? Okay. Now, if you turn to Surah number 16, verse number 78, right? We must understand Allah is the one who brought us in this world. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'an wa ja'ala lakum sam'a wal absar wal afida la'allakum tashkurun and Allah has brought you out from the wombs of your mothers while you know nothing and he gave you hearing sight and hearts that you may give thanks brothers when we were in your mother's womb it's not signs 
that makes us grow ears and nose and eyes, right? Get nothing to do with science. Everything has to do with Allah, right? As our Rob who did all this. When we were small, right? When we talk, we can we can cannot talk. We cannot even walk, right? To be able to crawl first and walk first and then run is not a matter of science and mother nature and all this. It's all from our creator, Allah, who gave us all this, <laughs> right? And yet, we, very little thanks that we give to Allah. All these creations that we have, all of us are perfect in terms of our looks, right? Imagine, and I told you before this, when that, when China conducted his, his their first surgery of the face, this woman was, the face was, was short, and then the whole face blew up, and then they got to reconstruct the face, right? Okay. Now, to reconstruct the face, Right? And to make it as if the face like you and me. So when I look at this, subhanAllah, I've never seen an ugly face. Because Allah's creation is perfect. When you want to reconstruct something, of course, alhamdulillah, she was able to function. But it still looks like a mon monster. As it is. Now, I, I'm, I'm a dental surgeon by profession, right? If you were to lose a tooth, whom Allah's that Allah has given us, nothing can make it the same as it was. Even though you put an implant, you still cannot eat as, as hard things as you did before. Anything hard, you get chipped and you get broken, you get replaced again, right? If you lose all this, many things, it can never be the same. Never, no matter how advanced the technology is, it will never be the same as what Allah has given us. And this shows clearly how Allah has given us the best. And yet, we are the one who mess up our oral hygiene, right? That we are the one, sorry? No, nothing happens by accident. With Allah's will, of course. But again, it, it is us who are negligent in looking, taking care of our health, our oral hygiene, everything. It is us who, sorry to say this, are not able to make ourselves fit in order to worship Allah, right? And again, Allah created us perfect. Allah, we have even been given the knowledge, right? It's a fitness instructor. He can tell you what to do in terms of being fit and able to be able to worship Allah the best. But we refuse to do so, right? To so much to that extent that some of us end up with diabetes and many of the illnesses that are, of course, some of them from Allah's will, right? But some of them are actually preventable, right? To, to have all this. If you, if you smoke, then you have to blame yourself if you have lung cancer, great. Right? Even at the packet of the cigarette, you will find smoking kills. It's very, as blatant as that, and yet people are still puffing away. And you're not thinking, oh, it's okay, then I take, take a, a reduced version of smoking, then I do okay, this vape and all these kind of things. So you do not want to jump on the 20th floor, you want to jump on the 10th floor, right? In order to injure yourself, right? So. In fact, some of the scientists said some of oh, the shisha are even worse for the lungs than right? your culture. No. Your culture. No? <laughs> what, no? No shisha? Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> right. Um, you started from yourself, the world. You guys started it. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so do beware that Allah has given us everything good in order to worship Allah. Agreed? The eyes that we are given, the, the ears, yeah, the face, the feet, the hands, the, the main function, it is to worship Allah, right? And as you know, even when we are working, if the intention to work, it is to feed the family, right? To save money to go to work. Even the whole whole work is a form of worship. Allah. Yeah. Now, so Allah's control over his slaves is perfect. Allah's bounties are endless. Agreed? Which surah did Allah say this? His bounties and his blessings are endless. We can never count Allah's blessings. Wa'atakum. Min kulima 
sa'altumuhu wa in ta'uddu ni'matallahi la tu'suha innal insana la dhalumun la dhalumun kafar surah number 14 verse number 34 in the meaning he gave you all that you ask of him and if you would tell count the blessings of Allah you will never count them but mankind is um, wrong do what ungrateful to Allah yeah so again right so this is something in which we we fail to even think about the trees that we have can we live in any other places than the earth no because why why the, why is what's the main reason why allah make us this love as this world as livable no what what is the reason why allah makes this world livable to worship allah to serve him that's the main reason not to play around right and it's very important that we realize this because at the end of the day brothers we are lost in this world great we are lost in this world because we want to find our permanent place in the hereafter that is the permanent place that we our home is always in jannah inshallah we are in this world to prepare to face allah in order to enter our permanent home as simple as that so don't get distracted by the things in this life yeah, and that is why yeah, Allah said His rights. His rights are very simple, right? It is to worship none, right, except Him. And yet, as I said, many of us are failed continuously. Yeah. Now, um, so as I said just now, yeah. So let let's go through what are the things yeah, um, that we must understand about Allah. Right. So the first one that he he must be worshipped alone with no partners. Yep. So if you look in Surah number twenty, verse number one three two. What more ahlaka? Yeah? Twenty, verse number one thirty two. What more ahlaka? Bil salati was was tabir alaiha la nas aluka rizqat. Nahnu narzukuka wal aqibatu lil lit taqwa. And enjoin a salah on your family and be patient in offering them. We do not ask your provision. We provide for you. And this is quite important. If, if we look properly and analyze this, 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 this meaning, right? First of all, right? Allah said, enjoin a salah on your family. It is your duty, especially as future husbands, inshallah, to ensure that your family are praying. Great. If we are given the ability, the permission to marry people of the book, should we take this permission? Let me repeat the question again. Right? You and I know that Muslim men are allowed to be, to marry people of the book. Yeah. Is halal. But should you take uh, this advantage of this permissibility? No, because the consequence is that Allah said, and join Salah on your family. Chances are that I have seen many examples, right? Those who marry a Christian would hardly, the, the woman or your wife would be become Muslim. Hardly. And the children, yeah. Yeah. And, and we, we have been given advice by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to choose a woman based on four things, right? Well, lineage, beauty, and the deen. And those who do not choose the deen is a loser, as simple as that. Yeah. So just because Allah gave us the opportunity to marry four, doesn't mean that we should marry four, correct? I think as, as we discussed before in our, our, our group, right? Only those who are married understand, correct? To maintain one, is a huge task right um so focus on doing things that are pleasing to allah right and and it is important that we understand this now the second part right is that allah does not ask us to provide him with anything right and as if that if we that as if we are doing all our favor by practicing our deen right and this is very important because some people think oh okay Allah needs us. Allah doesn't need any one of us. Yeah. And the next part, we prove, and when you look at this, it's very, for me, it's a very powerful statement. We provide for you. Very simple. If you understand this, 
none of the things that you earn in your work is from you. It's from Allah. And therefore, right, if you are in a job that you are always late for the whole, for example, then there's not the job for you. Okay, because Allah said, Inna salata kanas alal mu'mina kitaba mahuta. Surah number 3. Verse number 104. That, that Allah said that he has enjoined the prayers onto the believers at fixed hours. As simple as that. Yeah, and the salah is the first thing that we are going to be asked by Allah on the day of judgment. So it is important that you understand the provisions are provided by Allah. We just need to ensure that when we earn these provisions, it must be halal. In the process of earning the provisions, that we must be able to worship Allah well. Well, no? I'm not saying that you are in a disposition of work, that you only have five minutes every day, it is five minutes to pray. And then in five minutes of prayer, knowing that, for example, a client is coming, next five minutes would you have khushu in your prayer no of course not right allah clearly stated again we provide for you he provides us not us so if you are in the position that you're working and you're every day you have no khushu in your salah that's not the work for you it, it so you must be able to worship allah in the best of manners in order to get allah's provision and his mercy of course is the most important thing we are going to enter jannah upon allah's mercy not upon anything else yeah, so it is important. Yeah, that almost in the last part of this verse, 132, and the good end is for the muttaqun. Right, that means if you are because when doing we're doing all this, right, knowing Allah's provisions from Allah is a person with taqwa. If you have taqwa to Allah, you know that you're conscious that everything that you do is accountable to Allah. فَمَا يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَاتٍ خَيْرَ يَرَوْا وَمَا يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَاتٍ شَرَ يَرَوْا وَيَشْرَ Zazala 99, verse number 7 and 8. Yeah, whoever does goodness equal to the weight of atom shall see it. Whoever does an, an evil equal to the weight of atom shall see it. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is our etiquette with Allah now? Now we know that our duty with Allah, our Allah's rights, it is that He must, must, right, must be worshipped solid without any partners. So what must we have? First of all, we must have fear as well as hope. Can I have all fear and no hope? Or can I have so much hope? Oh, it's okay. Allah is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, right? Even I miss my prayers, it's been my, this is my culture, right? They're they are completely immune to these sins and missing prayers. They will pray everything at the end of that night before they sleep. And it's completely unacceptable. Yeah? Now, if you turn to surah number four, Verse number 131. Right? And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, and verily, we have recommended to the people of the scriptures before you and to you, O Muslims, that you all fear Allah and keep your duty to Him. But if you disbelieve, then unto Allah belongs all that in the heavens and all that is in on the earth, and Allah is ever free of all needs, worthy of all praise. So everything belongs to Allah. Right? So the fear of Allah is the path of forgiveness. I'm sure, I don't know about you, right? For me personally, myself, sometimes when I'm alone, or even to prepare for this, right? When you think about Allah, you just feel this fear and the tears will come. If you don't fear Allah, you would not ask Allah for forgiveness. Agreed? There must be this fear, oh, you know. And for me also, there must be this, this shame that you have in yourself that how can I act like this when Allah given me all this? I've not done enough. To be grateful to Allah, right? So, so it is important, right, that the, this fear of Allah is leading to, inshallah, forgiveness, salvation, and attainment of Allah's mercy, right? Um, in Surah number sixteen, verse one to eight, Allah say, Inna Allah ma'al ladinat taqawwal ladinahum muhsinun. 
indeed Allah is with those who fear him and those who do good. Yeah. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud said, right, it means that Allah is to be obeyed and not disobeyed, remembered, not forgotten, and shown gratitude, not in, not ingratitude. That is why, brothers, it is not a surprise that all of us were was all of us were ordered by Allah to pray five times every single day at every at different intervals of time in the morning and the last ones at night before we sleep it's not a coincidence because you and i know as a human can you imagine if we solve for a low cost like the christians right when do they pray every sunday once a week in that circumstances chances of you and me ended up not practicing is a lot agreed because we only think about a lot once a week are there friday muslims here yeah a lot right yeah so same thing as them right that that the iman will be so low because they only meet or they only think of allah every friday the rest of the time they completely forget about Allah. now always remember those who miss the prayers well we cannot label them as a i know this is hadith but they miss the prayers they are what kafir right but it depends on why they miss the prayer if they miss a prayer because they're just weak in iman and they're fear all they ask for forgiveness then they, they're not a kufar but they're just committing major sins if they're doing it because they think it's not important right they, uh, they can control themselves they, they are the one who predict their destiny and all this then they make them make them a kufur right um ibn abbas said the prophet muhammad said uh was asked about major sins right Prophet Muhammad said, what are, what, are, what are major sins? He replied, right? Associating partners with Allah, despairing of Allah's mercy, and believing that one is safe from Allah's plans. Right? Always remember, brothers, as much as we plan for our future, nothing is in our hands. Agreed? Nothing. Right? Allah can plan this for you, and you just have to ask Allah to make it easy and be contented with it, inshallah. Right, you can try to adjust it, but in the end, it is within Allah's will that things can happen. Wallahu ghalibun ala amri walakin akthara nasila yalam. Surah number 12, verse 21. Right, Yusuf? Every week I say this Allah has a full power and control of all his affairs, but most men do not know about this. Everything is Allah has said, Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Now the next one, number two. So the first, first of all, what attitude must we have in order to to know Allah's rights? We must have fear and hope. Second one, we must have shukur. We must give thanks to Allah. Always remember why we are sitting together here. That we are Muslims. All comes from Allah. It doesn't come from your parents, right? Alhamdulillah. Even my brother Charlie, right, and Nakil. Right, took shahada. Yeah, all are the will of Allah. Are you revived? Adam, remember the hadith. Okay, I know there's implications there. Right. Now, so this is important that we we are thankful to Allah, right? But we are Muslims. The first thing, not because we have house and all this. There's a bonus, right? That we are Muslims, a huge thing. It determines whether we are able to enter Jannah or Hellfire because we are Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Always thank Allah. But the thing that's so obvious is that the people are completely ungrateful to Allah in Indonesians and Malaysians, right? They, they took for granted that they are Muslims and they completely are not grateful to Allah. Yeah. Um, and therefore, in Surah number two, verse number 152, Allah said, Fatkuruni at kurkum washkuruli. Therefore, remember me, I will remember you. And remember this, if we, we remember Allah, Allah will remember us, right? And be grateful to me and never be ungrateful to me. Yeah. In fact, if, if we are in Allah's good books, what would Allah do? No, there is a there's hadith, right? Allah, Allah, will talk, Allah will tell Jibril, I love so and so. And Jibril will announce to all the angels, to love us. And then, subhanAllah, can you imagine all the angels are making dua for us? Are the angels making dua for us? What dua do they make for us? 
what dua specifically would they make for us? It's a huge, important dua. Which surah? Forty. Okay, then surah number forty. Ghafir. Verse number seven, eight, nine. Seven. Number eight. Number nine. And look at this dua, it's beautiful dua, right? They make dua to Allah. Yeah, so in the second part, Rabbana wasi'ata kulla shay'in rahmatan wa ilman falghfir lilladina tabu wa attaba'u sabilaka waqihim adhab al-jahim. Our Lord, you comprehend all things in mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who repent and follow your way and save them from the torment of the blazing fire. The angels don't just follow us like that. They make dua to Allah for us to be granted this. In the next verse, number eight, Rabbana wa adakhilhum jannati adni nillati wa attahum wa man salaha min abaihim wa azwajim wa dhurriyatihim inna ka anta al-azizul hakim. Our Lord, and make them enter the Aden, Eden paradise, which you have promised them, and to the righteous among their fathers, their wives, and their offspring. So everyone is mentioned by the angels. Verily, you are the Almighty, the All Wise. Number nine, Waqihimu Sayyad, wa man taqi Sayyati, yawma idhin faqad rahimta, wa dhalika huwa al fawzul azim. And save them from the torment of the uh, uh, for the sins of their sins, and whomsoever you save from the punishment of what he did of the sins that is pardoned him that day. Him, verily, you have taken taken to mercy, and that is a supreme success. Everything the angels angels made in their eyes amazing is a huge thing for us to understand, right? So important that we understand about the fact that we have been how many angels do you have? Four, right? We discussed before this class, we discussed right before one is right, one is left. The other one is Visura 13, verse number 11 in the first part, right? There's angels in front and, and, and the back. To protect us. Okay. Now, when we are grateful to Allah, there's a beautiful hadith from Muslim which you must have heard before. Right? Now, Prophet Muhammad said, Allah the Almighty says, whoever comes with a good deed will have the reward of 10 like it and even more. So if we do a good deed, what will get the reward? Ten times? Ten to? Seven hundred times in another hadith. Right? Whoever comes with an evil deed will be recompensed for one evil deed like it or he will be forgiven. So if we do a sin, we can only get one sin, not times ten or seven hundred. Or forgiven. Right? Whoever draws close to me by the length of a hand, I will draw close to him by the length of an arm. Whoever draws to me by the length of an arm, I will draw close to him by the length of the fathom, by the two arms length. Whoever comes to me walking, I will come to him running. Whoever meets me with enough sins to fill the earth, not associating any partners with me, I will meet him with as much forgiveness. Um, this is this is this is some scholarly opinions, right? So, for example. And it's not in any hadith, right? So when we are going to Masjid al-Haram, we get all the rewards, right? When you pray, 100,000. So the same thing we do with sins is multiplied also, right? Sorry? In holy months and all this, right? As debatable, of course. I think because I would, well, for me, who am I, right? But I would, I would argue in the fact that the hadith is very clear, right? When you do, when when you have intended to do a sin, you will only, and you do do the sin, you only get the the sin of that deed, not multiplied. So from this is hadith. So I argue with them that Allah knows best, whatever it is. But anyway, sin is a sin, right? Yeah. So we shouldn't. We, so remember, about the, the hadith, right? When a believer look at a sin, it is as if the mountain is going to fall on you, with a heavy heart, right? Whereas when a sinner does any sin, what happened? Just Welcome, salam, It's just like a, it's just like a fly, right? You think you do this, you go away. You never think about it. Sorry, a sinner. 
No, we don't care, right? A sin, yes. That's a sin. It's just like this. When a believer does a sin, it's so heavy. That, oh, you know, he's going to die, right? When a sinner does a sin, it's just like this. That's it. You just, it would just disappear and just forget about it. Yeah? Sorry? For our, our perspective, yes. Yes. No, no, not non-believer. Non-believer don't care about sins, right? Because they're not a believer yet. Therefore, a sinner, a sinner. Right? But this is the first thing, right? The, so the first thing is as our. Uh, so this is the second thing, right? The first thing was to have fear and hope in Allah. Yeah. The second one it is to show gratitude to Allah. Yeah. The third one, right? You must we must think about Allah's knowledge. About what? Does Allah knows everything that, that we do? Surely, Allah knows everything that we do. Everything. That's why Allah has His names. Al Alim, the All Know What. Al Khabir, right? The All Aware. Al Samir, Al Basir, the All Hearer, that the All uh, Seer. Yep. Um, so Allah knows everything that we do, right? That that's why there's a word in Arabic called uh, Muraqaba. What is Muraqaba? Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Muraqaba. What is this? That means that you are aware that Allah is watching you. Even was it Abu Bakr Even when he was taking a shower, he's so shy of Allah. He he no I think Abu Bakr Yeah, that he 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 will always wear something. He would never be naked in front of Allah. He always want to cover himself. And it shows the extreme, subhanAllah, uh, how Allah made him such a, a person who's always aware of Allah, mm -hmm. even at the time of taking a shower. Yet, um, so it means that in, in any situations, right, you believe in certainty that Allah knows everything that you do. And this is, this is quite powerful, right? Because then you would, well, you'd be so ashamed that you are committing sins, you're talking about, about others, that you are looking at a girl, right? In, in summer is coming, you know? Right. Why? Why point the music? So you need, you need to, we need to lower gaze <laughs> more. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. It is important that we, uh, uh, we, we know that uh, Allah is always looking at us. No, Ibn Al Qayyim, rahimullah, said, "Muraqabah means being, always being aware, always, right? Not part time, full time. Always being aware, and being certain that Allah is constantly watching what is visible of his deeds and what is hidden right so allah knows everything so we do not need to post on facebook or on instagram i'm doing this i'm in the mosque right i'm making dua i'm going to another mosque i'm fasting you don't need to do this oh precisely yeah you're only showing off and there is a minor shirk sorry uh, Yes. Now, that was what exactly what the Sahaba said, right? What did the Sahaba say to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ya Rasulullah, right? When, when we are with you, it's as if paradise is in front of us, hellfire is in front of us, right? We know, we, we are very aware of what you do. But when we go back to our families, right? Um, everything is forgotten, right? We forgot about, you know, the, it, Allah is watching over us and all this. So Prophet Muhammad said, if at all times you are always aware of everything, even the angels will salute you. That means it is impossible to be fully aware 24 hours a day of Allah's watching of us. Rather than that, we just need to do our best in everything. Because we are humans. Personally, when I look at, I look at do my work in law, do my clients, I can't say subhanAllah and all this, right? Because it affects my work, right? You also can, when you do your gym, right? You can say all the time, right? But do your best when you, when you are in terms of ease example, right? Always remember Allah, right? Always, so for example, right? In the morning at eight to 10 o'clock, for example, you got nothing to do at home. What do you do? Pray, pray what? To live right? Eight to 10, yes. You know, to how, yes, not Ishraq. Ishraq is when you do a prayer, when you must be in the mosque, 
and then you must do the adkar until sunrise 15 minutes then you do your ishraq you get the reward of hajj or umrah right but duha yes are we doing duha uh, oh you didn't even see treat alhamdulillah summer retreat inshallah yeah in wales doing so okay the the salah duha for example are divided into three all are considered as duha right but yes the names are different but the rewards are so different and the procedures are different right ishraq is done when the sun after so you be you must be in a state of the fajr is finished i cannot oh facebook instagram i, I must do the quran or do adkar all the way until the sunrise and after 15 minutes after sunrise i do two raka'ah that is called ishraq prayer it's a very strict condition right and you you must pray in the mosque you cannot just pray at home yeah um this is for the brothers of course sisters in, at home um so the reward is as if from hajj or umrah because of the intense well it's quite difficult to do right duha normal duha prayer is from like perhaps now sunrise about five right so perhaps perhaps maybe about six o'clock six to about 10 11 right no no that's not another name another name yes Dif same duha but different names right it's called duha what is the reward come no some yes so all the all the all the joints 360 joints in the body and all the joints are praising Allah, praising Allah and doing to do to because what is enough to replace this do to duha is enough to be similar in terms of praising Allah sorry four is better yeah but this duha you can do to minimum it's still accepted inshallah right what you're talking about uh, Adam is this but one hour before the horror for example this is duha but different name given name called awabin awabin yes yeah it's just a different name but all these three are classified as duha ishra duha and awabin right so all i'm trying to say brother especially the first time the religion is coming don't just sit down and you know watch all these uh, feeders and all these all the things happening in the world right do things that are beneficial for the deen inshallah like duha and all this yeah don't forget this questions no? now so do be aware of this thing of muraqaba right that means you know that allah was observing it surah number two was number two three five Two, 235. This is second part. Yeah. And know that Allah knows what is within yourselves. Allah knows everything in our heart, deep in our heart, external, everything Allah knows. Yeah. So be aware of Him. And know that Allah is for forgiving and forbearing. Allah give us two names. <coughs> Al Ghafur, Al Halim. Ghafur means forgiving, all forgiving. Everything Allah forgives with His will. Al Halim? No. Al Halim? No. Not Al Halim, Al Halim. Forbearing. That means Allah is patient. Allah is waiting for us to repent to him. Allah can punish us, but he did not because he's waiting for you and me to come back to him. It's amazing, right? In those Jahliya days before you took Shahadat, right? When you were the, you were doing fitness instructor in front of women and all this, right? Allah could have taken your lives away, isn't it true? Right? I mean, it's money, isn't it? Because well, he's a kufar. He was a kufar anyway, so no big deal for him. Yeah, but once you took shahadat, Islam is complete submission. There is some things that you need to avoid in Islam. Yeah? But so Allah is actually waiting for both of you, right? To come back to Islam, to come to Islam. And you did, alhamdulillah, with Allah's guidance. So this is what Al Halim is. He could have taken your life, but he's waiting for you, for both of you especially, to become Muslim. Right? And at least you have an opportunity to enter Jannah, inshallah.
Yeah. Now, um, so so this is important that we understand this work of muraqaba. That means to be conscious that Allah is watching all of us, us all the time. Yeah. Next one, right. we must ponder over Allah's power and control over us. Yeah. There's no fleeing from Allah. Where do you want to go? No, no, as in people want to run away from Allah. Inshallah. But, but some people want to flee to America, right? Then a freedom. <laughs> no, it's, it's quite real. Though, because some people, because they are so, so oppressed in Afghan, so oppressed in Afghanistan, in Bangladesh and all this, right? I want to run away, but I can do whatever I want, right? You're only running away to this place in which, yes, a lot of freedom, a lot of uh, it's a sin city, a sin, sin, sin place. Sorry? Cities. Yeah. Right? So, we have to ponder that Allah right, has the ability or to do anything that He wants to ask, no matter where we are. Right? In Surah number 51, verse number 50, 51, 50, Allah said, Fafirru ilallah inni lakum min hu nadhirum mubid. Flee to Allah. Yeah, um, from his time and his mercy. So it is important right, that Allah has made the Quran, right, for you and me to understand about his power. How powerful is Allah? It's unlimited. Yeah, sorry, 5150. Yeah. Okay, so. Many, many things that I cannot cover because of time constraint, right? For example, having good expectations from Allah. And it's very important, right? No matter how bad we are tested by Allah, we must still, they call it husnul dhan, right? Having good expectations of Allah. Yes. Yes, we should have this. 12, what's number? 87. We can, it's about 89, right? One of those. Yeah. It's from Surah Yusuf. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we must have good expectations. If Hadith from Bukhari Prophet said, I am as my servant's opinion of me. Yeah. So no matter what happens in our life, right? We have to think positive, be positive. We discussed many times in last week, like last week's lecture about Allah's test, right? The wonderful things that Allah has given us in terms of His test, it is only served to remove our sins, to put us in Jannah. Allah does not test us for fun. There must be a reason why Allah tests us, you know, to, to, to bring us back. I think in, in general, human beings are very arrogant, right? We have this arrogance to think that we know whatever things that we do, we can do whatever we want. It's a free will. Of course, Allah has given us the, the, the freedom of uh, choice to, to make in this life. But always remember the consequences always there. That their judgment will come. That all of us will meet Allah one to one. There's no escape, brothers, that we will meet Allah, like it or not. Whether you prepare to face Allah or not is irrelevant because you can only blame yourself if you're not prepared to face Allah. Agree? Okay? So those of us who are still struggling in terms of Quranic recitations, you do need to do quickly, right? To recite the Quran. And then you need to read the Quran, for example, with a meaning, right? That you must know what it means, right? And then you do need to act upon it, inshallah. Yeah. Um, now, so we must have good opinions of Allah and good expectations of Allah, inshallah. The next one, ihtisab. What is ihtisab? Ihtisab means that you look forward to Allah's rewards and forgiveness, right? For every affliction that you suffer, every pain that you suffer, right? And the suffering is this called ihtisab. Yeah? Um, in, this, in the hadith from Bukhari, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when Allah takes away from his believing servants, his beloved one of the people of the earth, if he displays patience and ihtisab, Allah will then not accept the reward for him less than Jannah. Do you understand? Right? Remember, we, we talked before our, our reactions to Allah's test. There are four reactions. What's the first reaction? No? That we run away from things. 
we forget about Allah. The second reaction, patience. The third reaction, to, to accept it as Allah's test. To so have rida on his Allah's test. That means you don't, don't turn back from Allah. The last one, say Alhamdulillah. To be grateful to Allah. And this is quite difficult, but it is the best reactions. And every test that we face, brothers, there's always goodness coming along with it. So do not uh, turn away from Allah, but be patient and come back to Allah, inshallah. Right? We talked about, for example, Asiya. Who's Asiya? What happened to her? In terms of her belief, was she a believer? Yes. She was one of the best believers, right? One of the four best women believers, right? So how did she, how did she end up her life? How did her life end? Sorry? Boulder. Right? If you read the Tafsir from Nukathir, right? Allah saved her. So when the boulder was being put, put down on her, Allah really taken her life out. So what was thrown, it was just a lifeless body. Because Allah all saved everything of a believer does. Right? So if you look in Surah number um, 66, I believe, verse number 11, you're familiar with it. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَا ثَالَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا آمَنُوا مُرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ إِذَا قَالَ رَبِّي بِنِّي لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجْنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجْنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ yeah? And Allah said for the, an example for those who believe, the wife of the Pharaoh, when she said, My Lord, build me a home with you in paradise and save me from the, the Pharaoh and his work and save me from the people of who are the wrongdoers. And Allah did him, did exactly what she made dua to for, and Allah saved her. Right? Now, any questions? So, in conclusion, talking about Allah's rights, right? The Allah's rights over us. Is it absolute? Is it negotiable? No. But is Allah's rights, is, is Allah's rights fair? Imagine, Akram, you have a cat. You have a cat. You got a cat, right? What happened? Well, who, who has a cat? I just spent all this money on him. <laughs> Today, 250 pounds. Alhamdulillah. You got, got a cat. What do you say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's the cat? No, besides me. <laughs> okay, imagine, Mubin, you had a cat, right? Imagine you had a cat, right? You give everything to the cat. You give food, you shower the cat once a week, right? You give all the love. Only to find your cat played with your neighbor. Every day your cat will go to the neighbor, then the, then the cat's right reaction, the nice roll of the neighbor's place, right? And then, and then, which is a lot of people are doing this, right? A lot of people are doing this in terms of human beings. Once you want to come, come and eat, you go to your house. Once you finish eating, you go out and play the neighbor. How will you feel? Upset, is it true? So Allah has given us everything, especially Islam, right? And yet we are not giving Allah his due right, which all of us are doing that. We are careless. We are negligent to Allah, right? And this is an important lesson that all of us all of us need to do just one thing, not to commit shirk and to worship Allah as our purpose of life. That means to lead a life as a Muslim. I do not need to qualify Islam as a practicing Muslim. Muslim is Muslim, as it is the true meaning is, complete submission to Allah. Right? You, you are only fooling yourself if you call yourself Adam, Muhammad, Ibrahim, and yet you are not submitting to Allah. Because that is not what Islam means. Right? So it's important in, in terms of the one who gives us everything, especially Islam, especially that we are still alive to worship Allah. It is important that we pay him with the right, uh, uh, right attitude and with the right <laughs> amount of worship in order for all of us to, inshallah, be admitted in the genital thread house. Any questions? Clear? Right? Any questions tomorrow, inshallah, says. Yes.
so so let's go through it before we end right um what do you call of we must have in in order to ensure that we maintain allah's rights the first one is hope and fear right second one is sugar gratitude yeah the third one uh, think about think that allah knows everything that we do right allah's knowledge about us right in terms of especially we talk about muraqaba yeah that allah is aware of what we do the next one is that we must ponder over allah's power and control over us because allah controls everything that we do the next one is um having good expectations of allah the next one is ihtisab, which means that looking forward to Allah's rewards and forgiveness for everything that we are tested for. And that's it. Yeah, questions? It's a huge topic, right? Of the market, so we need to go back quickly. <laughs> and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us with the ability to be alive. To meet the first ten, the, the best ten days of the year in Islam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala increase our iman and taqwa. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala accept our deeds in these ten days of Zulhijjah. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant or uh, accept the Hajj of those pilgrims who are not performing Hajj yet. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, forgive us our sins and shortcomings. Grant Allah Jannah the third day. Subhanahu Wa Taala. Subhanahu Wa Taala. Anta wa astaghfiruk wa atubu asma rabbi karabi alinza tamai sifun wa salam ala masalim muhammadul alamin assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Zakum khair. Inshallah tomorrow at EICC. Sin City. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.